Hey, this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum versus AEW Dark Elevation. Um, it was episode six. Sorry, I'm getting notifications from uh, from people based on the full disclosure that I put out last night. If you don't listen or watch full disclosure, um, you crazy. That's my sort of flagship show. Um, Elevation. This was another very good show with a couple of competitive matches. And a number of really great performances. Normally, I only pick one person for um, elevation or enhancement talent of the week um, or of the show. But this time, I'm going to pick a bunch. Um, Spencer Slade, who apparently is deaf, um, which is remarkable, really had a great... This is my first time seeing him. I believe it's his debut in AEW against Adam Page. Um, I thought that Shauna Reed really had a great showing against Thunder Rosa. And at the end of the day, you know, the Thunder Rosa versus Ivelisse debate, whatever went on between the two of them and Ivelisse is no longer there, I'll say this. Um, Thunder Rosa has pulled out fantastic matches, both in singles and in tags. Um, and Ivelisse never did that. Uh, Ivelisse never really elevated anybody um, where Thunder Rosa does and then of course my man very morales coming through just looking phenomenal i think that guy is definitely on the road to getting signed but let me go over my evaluation system whether it is a competitive or a non-competitive match i give it three check marks for non-competitive foregone conclusion jobber or enhancement matches whatever you want to call them um so those three check marks go as follows the first check mark is for the proper person being put over in memorable fashion a second check mark if they look great in the process and then a third check mark if the uh, person who is losing does a great job or is given an inordinate amount of offense by the person that is defeating them and then for competitive matches of which there is only I think two that qualify out of the 14 matches um, for competitive matches if both people look good in the process or both entities look good in the process of the match you get a check mark you get a second check mark for the person winning in a in a definitive and cool fashion and then a third check mark if something is elevated that could be used on dynamite either an angle is um is forwarded or uh, there's a new move or a new aspect to somebody's gimmick who's winning that can be furthered on dynamites great um so match number one is spencer slade who i said before did a really great job and adam page who continues to really excel in these kind of matches he doesn't win with the buckshot here which i thought was actually a kind of a cool idea that adam page can win with things other than the buckshot three check marks no problems here spencer slade i hope we get to see more of him and i'm definitely going to highlight him uh, when i post this at least on facebook and take a look at him because i saw that we are now friends on facebook which is awesome match number two Britt baker against tesha, tesha price tesha price is playing this sort of over exuberant character um, that i'm beginning to get into but Britt baker really looks every bit the pro here every bit dominant um, uh, the the uh, techniques are getting more and more complicated but still being executed very very well tesha price does a good job here Britt baker does a great job here three check marks all around midas black and jay lyon doing their rather silly um carnival circus act uh, with midas black playing the lion tamer slash ringmaster and jay lyon playing a lion of sorts um but jungle boy and luchasaurus have become increasingly serious less jokey joke stuff in the midst of their match so it's serious as a heart attack and jungle boy and luchasaurus look every bit the part of the serious competitor jungle boy of course going to take on darby allen for the tnt title three check marks are we going to have our second three check mark uh, elevation out of the six episodes that will be interesting to see andre montoya looking very good here against th2 but very morales really looking phenomenal keeping up with both 
um, Agnelico and uh, Jack Evans, and neither one of which um, is easy to do necessarily um, because those guys wrestle very different styles, um, very Morales looking just, I mean, I know I'm gushing about him. I just think he's really, really great. And um, they're protecting him somewhat because they have Andre Montoya take the uh, death roll and the submission loss. Three check marks all around. Really great job. Paul White here talks to the acclaimed. The acclaimed. Um, we don't have one of those great video packages, but I'm okay with them mixing it up with these uh, interviews once in a while with Paul White talking to the acclaimed. Anthony Bowens. Um, uh, reveals that he is gay, um, which is actually a, a, a bit of a shock, um, not in a bad way, but uh, I thought it was it was casually handled, and I thought that that was appropriately done. Really good job. Paul White is getting better as a person interviewing. Um, Anthony Bowen really getting to do most of the talking was really interesting, and he and Max Caster um, putting each other over. It's clear that there's a genuine sort of respect and camaraderie there, and I think it really comes across when the acclaim does their thing so nice segment here mike magnum and stone rockwell perfectly serviceable against uh, ricky starks and brian cage i thought that this is an interesting take which is they're sort of teasing a split and teasing dissension between the two and now brian cage going out of his way to make sure that he's including Ricky Starks in the matches. Again, it's complicated. Um, some people would say, oh, they're abandoning the angle. I don't think so. I think they're really trying to give some nuance to it here. Maybe they're, they are changing a direction than what they originally intended, but nonetheless, they're not abandoning it. They're sort of addressing it in a different way, which I like. Brian Cage passing off instead of doing a big powerbomb, passing <laughs> the opponent off to Ricky Starks so he can do the Rochambeau. Interesting, interesting. Three check marks. Match number six, Abaddon against Sky Blue. Obviously, Abaddon is not going to give up doing that widow's peak, even though I think it's the wrong move for her. They're calling it the cemetery driver, which is fine. She's spitting up blood. She's crawling around. She's getting more and more animalistic, which is probably the best way to go. Sky Blue does what you can when you're wrestling Abaddon. It looks fine. Three check marks. Um, match number seven, <laughs> Orange Cassidy against Prince Kai. Prince Kai really getting a chance to shine as far as a lot of mic time and bragging and then um, that ridiculous introduction, how he's the most handsome man in wrestling and all this kind of stuff. And then Orange Cassidy just picks him up, gives him a beach break and pins. Um, I laughed a lot. It was nice to have a palate cleanser match on these shows, which tend to run very long and a very, very similar kind of matches. So it was nice to have a palate cleanser kind of match. If you don't know what a palate cleanser match is, you just have to listen to any of my other videos. And I explained it at length, but it served its purpose here. Three check marks and a hearty laugh from yours truly. Uh, match number eight, Private Party against Alec Rendles and Colt Cabana. I will call this a competitive match. Um, did they both look good here? Yes, they both definitely got to show their stuff in a competitive match. The second check mark because Private Party was put over in a nice way. I thought Colt Cabana going for a pin on one of Private Party, who was not the legal man, so it made the referees look good that they didn't count the pin. And then the other guy swooping in with a rather complicated pin set um, to, to get the steal the win over Colt Cabana. I thought it was a really good look. The commentators did a great job here, Shivani and Paul White, putting over the intelligence of Matt Hardy's influence, how that's a Matt Hardy kind of move. So they're really putting over Matt Hardy as well. I really liked how this match was structured. It was a nice, nice breath of fresh air private party getting the win without necessarily cheating but definitely with this element of being sneaky which is another uh, thing in their arsenal so that's a third check mark for them um, as now we have a different facet to private party which up to then were just kind of spot guys and I think as heels it serves them better instead of just out out cheating um, to add some nuance to their game so I really like this three check marks um, Thunder Rosa and Shauna Reed really great showing by Shauna Reed and I'm feeling that gimmick and Thunder Rosa just doing a stellar job. Um, if it's got to be Eva Lisa against Thunder Rosa, I don't think there's a question that Thunder Rosa wins that just on sheer um, skill and the way that she's really integrated into AEW and it's putting women over at the same time of getting herself super over get in and get over that's the name of the game and thunder rosa certainly has done that and is helping shauna reed as well 
Three check marks. One of my favorite matches of this card. Uh, match number 10, Kit Sackett and Hayden Backlund against Best Friends. Perfectly serviceable here. Best Friends look really great. The uh, pile driver by Chuck rolling into a pile driver by Trent. It works. Though, I mean, I'm maybe I'm a little old school in this thinking. I always think the, a pile driver in a match by baby faces against jobbers um, feels a little over the top and excessive. Does that make sense? But that's nitpicking. But it's a note that I thought that I would bring up just because a lot of wrestlers listen to me. Um, in fact, they comprise wrestling people comprise most of the people who listen to my stuff. And I just want to iterate like the pile driver is a dangerous move in wrestling parlance and for it to be used in a jobber match by a baby face, I do think is incredibly excessive. Um, but that's just me. Three check marks. It's a good match nonetheless. Match number 11, I'm going to call this one competitive as well. Layla Hirsch, the recently signed, and Joel Mizunami, the crazy gimmick person, um, against Maddie Makowski, um, Matikowski and uh, Nyla Rose. Matikowski takes the uh, loss here, gets caught in a flash armbar by Layla Hirsch, which is her finisher, and taps out. I thought that that really worked. Um the dynamic of Layla Hirsch and Rio is really interesting to me. I actually prefer it. I kind of hope they keep them together for a while. Rio's kind of silly antics um, annoy me less. The multiple chops in the corner, I don't know, man. The rapid fire ones, they got to hit harder or something because it just looks silly. The, I feel Maddie did as good as you can selling that thing, but I hate that spot. I can't even lie. Um I did like the flash arm bar um, and their teamwork seemed fine. Nonetheless, I'm not going to give them that second check mark. So they'll get the first one and then they'll get the uh, third one. I thought both teams looked pretty good. Well, nah, it's a competitive, so it's a different standard. So both teams look fine. So that's a check mark. I don't think the team of Layla and Roe looked sort of really good came out of this looking really good just because the some of the real spots i'm just not feeling so i'm not going to give them the second check mark but that third check mark i am going to give them because it's obvious this is a team that's going to stay together for a while and that's a new deal and that's a good thing for the women's division in my opinion all right so we're not going to get three check mark out but We'll all live, won't we? Uh, match number 12, a nice little surprise here. Austin Gunn against Aaron Solo um, in a singles match. He's accompanied by QT, of course, and Nick Koromoto. Um, Austin, um, because they're, remember, they were all in the Nightmare family together. So when QT formed the factory with some of the newer wrestlers, um, the guns were kind of left out in the cold here. And so we're obviously setting up a thing betwixt the two of them, which I find really interesting. Austin Gunn uh, manages to avoid Aaron's finisher and hit him with the quick draw, which is a move I still hate. Though strangely, in a solo match, it tends to make more sense. It's a hip toss into a neck breaker, which tends to not look very good sometimes, but Aaron Solo makes sure it does look good. And he gets the win. And then we're going to have drama afterwards later, which is, again, one of the things I love about Elevation over Dark is, again, I would say that Elevation is the B show and Dark is the C show because things actually get advanced on um, Elevation, as we'll see later. But three check marks here and a surprisingly good match out of Austin Gunn. Match number 13, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky against Dean Alexander and Carly Bravo. Again, a good thing to put over Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. Good job all around. Three check marks. Uh, I love Scorpio Sky winning with that brutal looking heel hook. And then I love that Ethan Page then picked on uh, Carly Bravo and gave him the Ego's Edge, his version of the Razor's Edge. Giving them that heel bent as a tag team, I think is a great move. Now we have a promo with Austin Gunn who's expressing sort of dismay at having to wrestle his former um, stable mates. But then Billy Gunn comes over and tries to reach him. And then QT comes out and interrupts Billy Gunn and then hits Billy Gunn. So we're going to have a match between QT and Billy Gunn at some point. And I'm all about it. I think it's really great. It'll be fun to see Billy Gunn doing something on the solo tip as well.
Um, match number 14, our de facto main event. We have Danny Limelight, Matt Seidel, Mike Seidel against Konosuke Takashita, teaming with Michael Nakazawa and Kenny Omega. I'll call this a competitive match as well. Um, Konosuke winning with that beautiful bridging German, but Danny Limelight made to look good by kicking out of things, countering the one-winged angel by Kenny Omega and getting out of it, um, and getting out of a number of big things before being hit with that big uh, bridging German. And the fact that Konosuke got the pin I thought was a really great move and a really interesting move. And then showing little clips about iterations of these teams uh, wrestling on the house show last uh, Friday I thought was interesting as well good match three check marks and a good episode of AEW Dark Elevation congratulations on the ones that I chose that won the night as far as the best performances Shauna Reed um, let me make sure I get it right very Morales of course who continues to do a great job and Spencer Slade this is Stephen Platinum your friend in wrestling